he's preeminent over creation because he created uh, through him all things were created and he's before all things and stuff like that what do you guys think of that um well i haven't you, done that okay. specific research on firstborn and how it's used throughout okay. the life yeah no problem it's God. It's God. It's God. It's hello how are you doing i'm pretty good do you I um I used to have a what does the Bible teach book, but I lost mine, so I don't see it. Do you have any in English? Um, I, I I moved away, so I didn't get to continue my my studies with the with the brothers I was studying with. So it's been a very very long time. Um, but you know I did have questions. There were some parts in there that I like. Um, I was doing some research and I had more questions about. When in the in the idea of Jesus being like the firstborn of all creation and uh like that's that concept of Jesus being um, uh, what Jehovah first created. Yes. So like, what can you guys give me more explanation on that? And then I guess I'll share my thoughts as well. Cause so are you wondering? What are you, what, what are yes. You like so because when I because I don't I'm I don't I didn't use the New World Translation and stuff like that. So when I read it in my Bible, it is, it is different. Like, um, it does say firstborn of all creation, of course, but um, it goes on to explain what that means. Like, so like, uh, like from the context, it seems like it's saying that he's preeminent over creation, not that he is the literal firstborn of creation. So I wanted to, I didn't get a chance to ask the people I was studying with this, and but uh, I'm glad I ran into you guys here, so. What do you guys think? Have you heard the idea that Jesus kind of helped creation as well? Yeah, yeah, like uh, like he, the Father created everything through him and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's the very next verse. We get mm, that yeah. idea from Colossians 1, 15 yep. and 16. It says, He, Jesus, is mm. the image of the invisible God, yeah. the firstborn of all creation. Yeah. And then it says, Because by means of him all other things were created mm, excuse me. in heaven on a hand in earth. Oh, man, excuse me. I've just drunk this tea, so I'm, I'm bur burping. But yeah, so. So that part right there, that's that's the important. Like it tells us, it goes on explaining how he helped create and stuff like that, right? My the 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 issue that I found is that like the use of the word other there, like how it says like he created all other things and you know yada 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 continues to break it down. He's before all other things and stuff like that. But when I looked in, like in my Bible, it doesn't say all other things. It just says all things. And then I checked out. I was, let me check that. Like let me look at the Greek and stuff like that. So I. What the brother showed me like this, that's why I have the JW app, right? So I went in the JW app on the Kingdom Interlinear and I wanted to see if like other was there in the Greek and it wasn't. And so I thought, I think that that's uh, like that one little difference can bring a huge change to the meaning of the text. Like if, it, if, it, if he's created, if he created all other things, then it would make sense like, okay, yeah, he was the first thing that was created and then God used him to create everything else. That would make sense if it said that. But if it says that he created all things and he's before all things, then that brings a different meaning that he himself can't be created, that he has always been there with the Father, you know? Yeah. So I think that that's, I don't know, I want you guys' thoughts, well, man. I think the fact that it just re it, it refers to him as the firstborn, mm -hmm. even in general. Okay. You know, being birthed has the connotation of having a beginning. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So. You know, the Bible does refer to Jesus in several different occasions. The firstborn. Yes. So um, that also kind of gives you the indication that you know he had his beginning. You know. Do you okay? Kind of start. Uh, what are your kind of thoughts too? Back this up through other scriptures in the Bible. As okay. Well. So here, Proverbs eight thirty that says, "Then mm. I." That I is also Jesus, was beside him, referring to Jehovah, mm -hmm. as a master worker. I was the one he was especially fond of day by day. I rejoiced before him. All yeah. the time. So we see here that he's not alone creating everything, but mm -hmm. he was beside his father as a master worker. Okay. So okay. So it, was, it was really both of them working together to create all. I, and I and I, I agree with that. I agree with that. So my so my my issue would be, uh, or the question that I have, I guess, is the origin of Jesus. Like, was he himself created or was he always there with the Father, um, creating everything with the Father? And that's, that's what I'm like. Uh, I would say that he was first created because mm -hmm. that first 
scripture said he was the firstborn of all creation. All right, so that part. So I would say, or I guess the Bible would say, mm -hmm. he's the first thing to ever be created mm -hmm. directly by Jehovah. Yeah. Okay, so then, okay. So here's, here's my thing with this. Um, if he's called the firstborn of creation, so like you, you're taking that to mean that he's, it means literal firstborn, like he was the first thing and then he created everything else. Okay. So like that, that, and that was an interesting point to me because I, I did research, I, research, I tell you, I, del I delved deep into this and I wish that I had the brothers there to, I'm glad I found you guys. I'm just saying, I'm glad I found you guys. So, but like, so I looked into this, uh, firstborn and if it's used literal all the time, right? And uh, it, come, it came to find out that it, there were certain instances where it wasn't. Like for example, like, uh, like in Psalm 89, uh, God calls David the firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. And so like, I know that David, we, we, he was the youngest of his brothers. He wasn't the first king of Israel or the first king of the earth. So what does it mean that he was the firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth? And so, uh, the, like, I think the context tells us, like, it means it's the position. He's the highest of the kings of the earth, the firstborn of the kings, meaning he's preeminent over the rest of the kings, right? And so it's a position. Uh, does that make sense or? Am I, okay, cool. I don't want to make it sound like I'm cool or crazy. <laughs> But yeah, so like it, it, um, uh, it, it, like that it's a position of supremacy depending on the context. Sometimes it could be literal, sometimes it could be a, a position. And so like that's what my question would be like, okay, when it comes to Colossians, is, it, is he the literal firstborn of creation or is it saying that he is preeminent over creation? And that would be my question. So like the rest of the verses kind of show me that he's preeminent over creation because he created uh, through him all things were created and he's before all things and stuff like that. What do you guys think of that? Um, well, I haven't you, done okay. specific research on firstborn and how it's used throughout okay. the Bible. Yeah, no problem. But I would say that through some other scriptures as well, that we can kind of deduce that he was literally the first. Literally created? created. Okay. Do, do we have a verse that says that, that he was literally created? Because I look, I, I'm telling you guys, it's, it seems to me that we have like literal verses that say the other thing that he's always like been there, like John chapter one verse like three, like that one's a a, a deep one to me. You guys familiar with that one, the John chapter one verse three, where it says like uh, uh, like through him all things were made, mm -hmm. yep. and, and right, and then not anything. Without him, that anything that came into existence came into existence, right? Uh, let me see if I can get that. Um, I mean, that was one of the reasons why uh, Jesus was so particularly special. Because he I agree. One. Yeah. Well, because he was the only one that was solely created by Jehovah, and then like that scripture references through him, everyone else was created. So, but this is a pretty um, interesting subject. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you. I can keep John here. Okay. First, uh, John three sixteen. Mm -hmm. That one says, "For God loved the world so much that He gave His only begotten Son, so that everyone exercising faith might not be destroyed, but have a blessing." Right. So, what would you think "only begotten" in this context? Means? Yeah, uh, unique. Like so, the, like the Greek word there is monogamous for only begotten. Yeah. It means unique, one of his kind, one of his uh, one like unique in relationship and unique in nature. Exactly. So like, he's the unique son of God. Not that he is like literally like God literally birthed him, but exactly. you know that he's the unique one. He shares in the nature with the Father. So no other angel would be. No angel like is called Jesus. him. Correct. Because he's completely un unique. So I think from there you can kind of deduce if, what's the difference between all the other angels and Jesus. Well, why is okay. he the firstborn? Why is he called unique? Here? Yeah. And it would be normally because he was the only one solely created only by Jehovah. And then with him, he was Could it? helping create others. Another interesting um, scripture is um, John chapter 6, verse uh, 56 and 57. Mm -hmm. And in this context, this is when Jesus is having his last meal. Okay. Yeah. And he's explaining to them, um, you know, he's breaking down what, um, you know, what his blood would represent, what his flesh would represent. Yeah. But what's interesting is here in verse 57 that it says, just as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So also the one who feeds me will live because of me. Mm -hmm. So that, that phrase, you know, I live because of the Father, 
that also gives you kind of the indication that, you know, he recognizes that it's through Jehovah that he was able to be created. I live because of him, not I live with the Father, you know. Could, could that be talking about him coming, because you, 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 we all believe that he did exist, pre-existed his human birth, and that, you know, the Father sent him down on earth in human form, created that body. Could that be what he's talking about, that so because all the context is him being sent by the Father down to earth, and right. that uh, it is because of the Father and his will that he is here, um, in his human form, living, walking amongst us, teaching, giving right. the life and stuff like right. that. But, Go ahead. No, no, no. Yeah, absolutely. But also, we see that um, through all of his earthly ministry, he always pointed towards um, the fact that um, all the glory went back to, to mm -hmm. Jehovah. Yeah. That he was the one. Um, he was the reason why he was there. He was the one who sacrificed himself. Uh, he was the one who gave Jesus our sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So he always he always put his attention towards Jehovah. Um, as, not only as a sign of uh, his submission to him, but you know, just to show everybody that all the glory goes back to him. Yeah. Because you know, he's our father, he's the original you know, creator of all things. Yeah. So, so I, I did want you guys' thoughts, a, a deeper thought on John 1, 3, about where he says, and if you, if you can read that for us too, the one in John 1, 3, because I really want you guys' thoughts on this one. Right, so it says, All yeah. things came into existence through him, mm -hmm. apart from him, not even one thing came into existence. Yeah, so I, I actually like the New World translation on this one. So like, yeah, so it says how, uh, all things came into existence through him, right? Not all other things, but all things came into existence through him. And then not one thing came into existence without him. I think I would jump up one verse and it says, okay. this one was, was in, in the, the beginning, beginning with, with God. God. Absolutely. So he was kind so he, of in the timeline of this verse. Jesus so he was there. was already created and was with God. Ooh. And then after he was created and already with God, it jumps to this, all things were created. I want you to tell me, be, be honest with me, and tell me if I'm crazy, okay? I want you to, if... Definitely not crazy. Okay, cool. So, my name is Avery, by the way. Um, what, Avery? Avery, Avery. Avery. Yes, sir. So, I agree with, like, looking at context. That he's in the beginning with God, and I think that verse 3 solidifies whether or not he had a beginning or not. Like if he's in the beginning with God already, right? Then what does that mean? Does it mean that he was created with God or does it mean that he was always with God? I think that question is asked and then verse three answers that when it says that all things were created through him, everything. It says that not one thing came into exist in existence without him. Now, with this theology of like a like that you guys are giving me that I was see seeing in chapter four, it's that Jesus at a point in time did come into existence. But this says nothing came into existence without Jesus. Not nothing else, but nothing at all. So like that's, that would be like, like I'm really, I'm really I'm stiff with this stuff. <laughs> Forgive me please, but I am stiff with this stuff. But like, it, like to me, it's, it's kind of clear that not one thing came into existence without him you know like that's what it that's what it says to me like verbatim and it's whether that one thing represents himself as well well yeah like it says not one thing not not one thing came into existence all things were created through him you know <laughs> but not one thing came into existence with it. so that means everything that has ever come into existence anything came into existence through jesus that means that jesus has always had to be in existence he himself can't come into existence because everything came into existence with him. So do you think Jesus created himself? Because you agreed that he had a beginning. No, I didn't. I, I, I don't. Yeah, I do. I, so with this, I don't think, I think it teaches that he didn't have a beginning. I think it teaches that he was always with the Father from eternity's past. That he never came into existence, but has always been. And the Father and him worked together to create everything period, everything that came into existence. It's an interesting idea. <laughs> you definitely understand that if you read yeah. these verses, coming to that conclusion, yeah. 
But I think when you combine them with some other verses, mm -hmm. say he's the firstborn of all creation, mm -hmm. or maybe ones that say that the Father is greater than I am, okay. that it can somewhat clarify that he had a beginning at some point. Okay. You, so you, like, with you the, believe go ahead. that um, there? You know, do you, do you believe that if they both, you know, lived for all existence, that they're kind of both on the same level? Yes, when, in regards to uh, their, their essence, their nature, I, I believe that um, they will be equal ontologically, although even Jesus like submits to, to what the Father's will. When he comes down to earth, he obeys the Father, you know, submits to the Father and teaches everyone to do the same. He even teaches them to submit to himself as well, but he does point to the Father. And so, although I believe that they, like, they coexisted eternally, that they are equal, in nature, uh, I do believe that the you know he submits. I think it's good um, because it's kind of an interesting thought. Um, the fact that uh, you know Jesus did sacrifice you know his life for us, yeah. as we all know, yeah, giving us the opportunity to live forever. Absolutely. Um, but the Bible is you know pretty clear about the fact that you know he was. Um, he did. How you doing? Yeah, you guys are on your way. Okay. Um, but it did, you know, it talked about the fact that um, he died for three days, for example, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know Jesus he gave up his life. If he died. Um, then that means that he's not all powerful. Something that's all powerful, something that's almighty, he cannot die. So, you know, with that in mind, you kind of see the difference between him and, and, and God. God is all powerful. He, God cannot die. Do you, that, so, that, that, that would mean that super nice talking. Yeah, yeah you as well. And what was your name, sir? Andrew. Andrew. You're, oh, you're, you're leaving? Oh, yeah, we okay. Take a break right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, well I, it was nice meeting you. Yeah. Hey, um, listen, you can go on our website, um, and if you want somebody For to get sure. in contact, D definitely. Um, Thank you. Contact card. You know, yeah. Awesome. As you know, free Bible studies is a QR code. Right? Beautiful. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Do you guys come up here often? There's, yeah. Well, you know, everybody's schedule is different, but uh -huh. there's always carts here. Okay. So there'll, there'll always be somebody here. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Well, I I appreciate you guys stopping by. This is amazing. Take care, guys. Oh my God. Logic.